Dear colleagues, I'm Professor Eduard Ivanov, a frequent visiting lecturer at the International Anti-Corruption Academy in Luxembourg, Austria. I'm glad to introduce you the first IACAS online course on the use of anti-corruption compliance standards and guidelines for designing and implementing an anti-corruption compliance program. In previous lectures, we discussed various categories of anti-corruption compliance standards and guidelines and the main steps in designing an anti-corruption compliance program. Special attention was paid to a role of a risk assessment. There is no doubt that the risk assessment is a cornerstone for an effective anti-corruption compliance program. At the same time, when I think about compliance and ask myself why companies implement anti-corruption compliance programs, the first answer that comes into my mind is that companies shall comply with applicable laws and regulations. Therefore, to design an anti-corruption compliance program, the company should define laws and regulations it should comply with, and it will be the first topic of our discussion today. The second topic I would like to discuss with you is the role of corporate principles and values. Sometimes particular conduct can be not prohibited by law, but it can be absolutely unethical. A company can use particular gaps in laws and regulations especially in countries with a high level of risk of corruption. But managers of the company understand that doing so, the company will act against legitimate interests of local citizens, of local communities. This conduct can bring to their profit, but at the same time, it can cause a serious reputational damage tomorrow. In this regard, the concept of compliance beyond the law received global recognition in the corporate sector. Companies define in compliance programs and other corporate policies the main principles and values that should be considered by employees and business partners when they take decisions in various situations. Particular behavior, particular conduct even if it's not prohibited by law, can be absolutely unacceptable according to compliance programs and other corporate policies. To develop an effective anti-corruption compliance program that will protect your company in different situations, you should consider all the applicable laws and regulations. Sometimes legal acts contain completely different provisions on the main elements of an anti-corruption compliance program. You should consider not only law of your country of residence. When you think about applicable laws, you should ask yourself, where does my company do business? To answer this question, you should consider laws of the countries where a company is physically present for example, his branch or representative office. You should also consider laws of countries where you have business partners. It is also very important to take into account anti-corruption laws of countries that have extraterritorial application. You can find many legal acts and regulations in the legal library of the UN Convention Against Corruption that contains anti-corruption laws and jurisprudence from more than 180 jurisdictions worldwide. There are several domestic laws that have extraterritorial application. The Transparency Anti-Corruption and Economic Modernization Act, adopted in 2016 in France and known as Sapandu Law, the UK Bribery Act of 2010, and the US Foreign Corrupt Practices Act adopted in 1977. These laws may be applied to foreign companies that are not physically present 
in these countries. But the corruption offenses committed outside of sovereign territories of France, the United Kingdom, or the United States. In this short lecture, I cannot explain you all the details related to the UK or the US law, but I would recommend you to read these legal acts and guidelines published by the relevant government authorities. When you define all the laws applicable to a compliance program, you should check whether any of these laws contain mandatory requirements related to the anti-corruption compliance program in general or to particular policies or procedures. It is also important to check if there are any domestic standards and guidelines published by local authorities. As a rule, companies implement their anti-corruption compliance on a voluntary basis. However, there are some exceptions. For example, the federal law of the Russian Federation on Combating Corruption, adopted in 28, established a general legal obligation for all companies acting in Russia to implement particular measures to prevent corruption and defined a set of possible measures. The General Prosecutor Office of the Russian Federation carries out supervision over the compliance with this law. The Central Bank of the Russian Federation adopted several legal acts that established the legal obligation for particular types of financial businesses to implement anti-corruption compliance. Also, the South African Companies Act of 28 defined obligations of major companies to establish social analytics committees on the boards that have particular functions related to preventing corruption. Domestic guidance on anti-corruption compliance were published by government authorities in Brazil, France, Italy, Russia, Ukraine, the United Kingdom, and the United States. When you look for domestic guidance on anti-corruption compliance, you should consider that not all of these documents are translated into English. Sometimes you need a local lawyer, or at least a person who speaks local language or languages, and can search in domestic legal databases. There are various types of documents that can contain recommendations on anti-corruption compliance. Not all standards or guidelines, but sometimes also letters or information letters or recommendations. Usually, domestic standards and guidelines are published by anti-corruption agencies or other law enforcement bodies. But sometimes, completely different agencies are responsible for providing guidance for private sector. For example, in Russia, the Ministry of Labor and Social Protection published guidance on anti-corruption compliance in the private sector, and also several useful letters on implementation anti-corruption compliance program. Finally, I would suggest you to consider not only special guidance published for companies, but also recommendations and guidelines for prosecutors and investigators. For example, in the United Kingdom, and the United States. Government authorities publish special guidelines for prosecutors and investigators. It is important to read these documents carefully and to consider when you design your compliance programs. Because in case of corruption, prosecutors and later on judges will evaluate your compliance programs based on these special recommendations for prosecutors, investigators or judges. There are a lot of discussions about a role of ISO standard anti-bribery management systems. It's interesting that in a number of countries, in particular in Indonesia, Malaysia, Peru and Singapore, governmental authorities recommended domestic companies to design compliance programs according to this standard. Similar recommendations were published by the Shenzhen municipality in China. You can ask, what are the main differences in domestic anti-corruption laws? I would like to mention several points. 
many countries in the world implemented provisions of international anti-corruption conventions. They criminalized bribery, both in public and private sector, and bribery of foreign public officials. So-called facilitation payments are prohibited in most countries in the world, but not everywhere. The International Anti-Corruption Compliance Standards and Guidelines recommend to prohibit an anti-corruption compliance program all possible types of corrupt behavior and all payments that can be considered as payments related to corruption, including facilitation payments. You should also provide your employees with clear guidelines how to act when their business partners, especially in countries with high level of corruption, offer them bribe or request them to pay bribe in case that in these countries commercial bribery is not prohibited, is not criminalized. Your employees should have clear guidelines what to do in these situations, how to report these cases to anti-corruption compliance units or departments. Another point I would like to stress is the liability of legal entities. More and more countries in the world establish criminal liability of legal entities. However, some countries still have administrative liability. I would recommend you to check all the applicable laws and consider provisions on criminal liability of legal entities or administrative liability in your compliance programs, in particular, in the policy on due diligence of third parties. You should check your third parties to be sure that your business partners or potential business partners were not involved in any kind of corrupt behavior and were not convicted according to criminal or administrative law. The next point we have to discuss is the definition of public official. Some countries consider as public officials only employees of government authorities. Other countries use a broad definition of public official and include in this definition also managers of state-owned companies, professors of public universities, public schools teachers and doctors working in public hospitals. I would recommend you to check carefully all the applicable laws and include a broad definition of public official in your compliance program. In this case, your employee will avoid possible misunderstanding when they have to interact with public officials from various jurisdictions. Some countries have special regulations on gifts and hospitality. You have to check all the applicable thresholds for gifts and implement these thresholds in your compliance program to avoid possible violations of domestic laws when your employees will give gifts or provide hospitality to business partners. Finally, if your company is involved or can be involved with political financing, you should consider all the applicable laws because in some countries, providing funds to political parties by foreign companies is completely prohibited. Other countries have special requirements on transparency of political financing. Clear regulations in your compliance program will allow you to avoid possible violations of laws related to political financing and possible misunderstanding with your business partners from various countries. It is absolutely necessary to define applicable laws and consider these laws in an anti-corruption compliance program. But besides of this, many international anti-corruption compliance standards and guidelines recommend companies to define corporate principles and values as an ethical base for an anti-corruption compliance program. 
Why is it so important? I would say there are two reasons. Sometimes, when a company does business in highly corrupt jurisdictions, it is not enough just to follow the rules. The compliance program should apply necessary requirements to the behavior of your employees and business partners to avoid possible violations of ethical principles and values and to prevent possible damage of company's reputation. The second reason, you need your anti-corruption compliance program, not just on a paper. This program should be supported by your employees and business partners. And in this regard, you have to consider the principles and values in particular countries, in particular local communities. Only in this case, your compliance program can be successfully implemented and can protect your company from corrupt practices. The general anti-corruption compliance standards and guidelines recommend companies to declare in codes of conduct and in anti-corruption compliance programs principles and values that became a global recognition in the corporate world. Zero tolerance of corruption, transparency, integrity, and turn from the top. The UNODC guide and OECD recommendations underlined an importance of the turn from the middle. In reality, employees of companies report on daily basis to middle-level managers. And the middle-level management can play a crucial role in promoting corporate culture. The guidelines published by the World Bank Group paid special attention to the individual responsibility of employees. The employees of company should understand that maintaining an anti-corruption compliance program is not just a function of the compliance unit or department. Everyone is responsible for preventing corruption in the company. The corporate principles and values should be implemented not only in the code of conduct and anti-corruption compliance policies, but also in other internal corporate policies and documents. They should be also supported in both decisions and promoted in corporate trainings. For a company that has representative offices or branches in other countries, it is very important to localize the anti-corruption compliance program. Some companies make a typical mistake they simply publish anti-corruption compliance programs on corporate websites in other countries and expect that local employees will comply with these programs. If you want to implement an effective anti-corruption compliance program in other country, you should consider local culture and values of local citizens, of local communities, You should understand that some social groups or citizens in various regions of a foreign country can have completely different values and priorities. You should at least translate your compliance program into foreign language. But I would say it is not enough simply to translate your compliance program. You should find a language understandable for local partners and employees in another country. You should explain them why your compliance program, your principles and values are so important for you and why they should respect them. Only in this case, they will support your compliance program and your compliance program will protect your company from corrupt practices in another jurisdiction. You can find useful information on applicable laws and corporate principles and values in the UNODC guide 
an anti-corruption ethics and compliance program for business, and in the guidelines published by the World Bank Group. There is also a link to the legal library of the UN Convention Against Corruption that was already mentioned in my presentation. Dear colleagues, we discussed how to conduct risk assessment, define applicable laws and corporate principles and values. Next week, I will share with you recommendations of the International Anti-Corruption Compliance Standards and Guidelines on a framework of an anti-corruption compliance program and main policies and procedures. We would also appreciate your feedback. If you have questions, comments, maybe ideas on new topics for online trainings, or even proposals for cooperation, please don't hesitate to contact the International Anti-Corruption Academy via email online training at ayaka.int. Thank you very much for your attention.